All right, guys, welcome back. This is Bass Editor. So today I'm going to tell you about the upcoming primary and special elections. So for an odd reason, which I'll get to later, I'm actually going from the last poll closing to the first poll closing. So the last state that poll that closes its polls is the state of Washington. Now, Washington has a top two primary, and what that means is that all candidates from all parties participate in the same primary election. And the top two vote getters move to the general election in November. Now, this creates an interesting dynamic where in some cases, the top two vote getters are both Democrats or they're both Republicans or perhaps one Democrat and one third party candidate. And where's a lockout of so one party won't make it to the general election, most likely it happened. Most likely it happened in the 9th district. So Adam Smith and Cedar Smith are two Democrat candidates. So, and there's one Republican candidate. So why would a lockout happen here? Because this district is like in the immediate Seattle suburbs and it's very heavily Democratic. And I think it's highly likely that Republicans can get locked out of this race. Another little thing about this race is Sarah Smith is an Alexandria Oskiso Cortez like candidate. Um, I don't know if she's a member of the, of the Democrat Socialists of America or not, but she is very progressive and she is trying to um, make inroads against Adam Smith, the incumbent in this specific race. And then the 8th Congressional District. Well, the 8th, the 5th, and potentially the 3rd are both competitive districts. They're all competitive districts. And it remains to be seen how much the incumbents in the 3rd and 5th District and businessman and former state senator Dino Rossi, what percentages of, of the vote they can get in these elections. I might make some ratings changes in these specific races if Dino Rossi can get enough of the vote. If Dino Rossi can get like 52% of the vote or more, then I might move that race to lean Republican. So the vote totals in these races are something to watch and will be very um, pivotal and will give us an idea of where the race actually stands. Just scanning for some other potential lockouts here. Uh, doesn't seem like there, wait, let's see. A lockout could happen in the third dish, but it's not likely to happen, but it could happen. Again, a lockout could happen in any district where there's more than one of any party, more than one candidate of any party. However, un ex except in the 9th district, it's very unlikely to happen. So don't bet on any lockouts here. So the next state that pulls, it's closed, is Kansas. So the big story here is the governor primary. The Jeff Coyler versus Chris Kobach primary. This will have a monumental impact on the race. If Jeff Collier wins, I'm going to make this race a safe Republican. If Chris Kobach wins, it's only lean Republican, because Chris Kobach is quite controversial. Chris Kobach was the face of Donald Trump's voter fraud um, investigation, his voter um, election integrity panel. And he also has some other very conservative views, perhaps even too conservative for Kansas. And that can make the governor's race a lot closer if he does win the primary. Let's go to Missouri now. Missouri, mm, Claire McCaskill and Josh Hawley are both heavily expected to win their respective primaries. If someone that's not McCaskill or Hawley wins the primary, something has gone horribly wrong. Another um, potential Alexandria Oskiso Cortez um, upset that can happen is in the first district. Um, where Corey Bush is trying to upset Lacey Clay in the St. Louis area district. Again, unlikely to happen, but anything's possible. Let's go to Michigan. In Michigan, Debbie Stabenow is going to win re-election in the primary and general role, I predict, pretty easily. And Republicans will choose their um, candidate in this specific election. Not really a competitive primary to speak of here, although this state does have two very competitive general elections and house races in the Ann Arbor and Lansing areas. Mike Bishop's um, seat and the open seat in the immediate um, Detroit suburbs. Okay, so this is what the main event of the night is.
the one you've all been waiting for, the Ohio special election, this election will have monumental impacts on what the national environment looks like heading into November. This is in the 12th district, which is this district at Licking, Muskingum, Delaware, Franklin, Morrow, Marion, and Richland counties. And a little bit of Crawford, tiny bit of Crawford County. So the reason why this is so, like, it's, I think in this case, if the Democrats win in this race, then the race for the House, it's probably over. Democrats probably would have sealed the deal if Jenny O'Connor wins, because this time, if Republicans lose, there's no excuse for it. In most other races, you either um, had a Republican run a very bad campaign. In Rick Saccone's case, you had low turnout, which also contributed to um, Democrats overperforming. And those are two of the main reasons. And then you also had bad candidates like Roy Moore and Greg Gianforte. So there's always a reason why Republicans underperformed in special elections. However, there is no excuse why this should go Democrat. Troy Bottles, Troy Balderson is on the airwaves, perhaps more than his opponent, Danny O'Connor. He's about equal money as Danny O'Connor. This is a heavily Republican district. Last time it voted for a representative by 36%. And because it's getting high media attention, it's likely to um, incur very high turnout. So if Republicans lose this, there is no excuse. The House is the race for the House. It's over. Unless if some bad thing happens to the Democrats in November. So who do I think is going to win? I think I'm going to give a slight advantage to Troy Balderson, the Republican candidate. The two candidates here are Troy Balderson, the Republican, and Danny O'Connor, the Democrat. Troy Balderson, I think, is the favorite because as of recent, Democrats have been, they have still been overperforming in special elections, but not by as much. Also, like I was saying, Troy Balderson has been on the airwaves um, a lot more than Danny O'Connor. Has. And if, in order for Daniel O'Connor to win, he's going to need a lot of people that voted for, for a Republican representative in the 2016 elections. And I think being Troy, Baldus, Troy Balderson's presence in this um, race makes it so that dissatisfied GOP voters, like never Trumpers or people who don't just don't like Trump, that but vote Republican usually, are less likely to break for O'Connor. Some polling shows Balderson ahead slightly. Inside Elections um, gives Balderson a favorite. The Cross Tab by G. Elliott Morris also has Balderson as a favorite. And I think that all those factors combined, that Troy, Balders Troy Balderson, and all those factors combined, leads me to believe that Troy Balderson is a very slight favorite in this race. Now, this does not mean it's a slam dunk for him. Danny O'Connor could definitely still win. That's not really it. A doubt. Danny O'Connor could definitely still win. I'd say he even has a higher than 40% chance of winning because this race is very close. And this race, the margins also have the potential to be very close. It could be a one or two point race like the one in Pennsylvania was. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Thanks for watching this video. Happy election night and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.